Hey guys, we are back in my garage rebuilding a uh, 2006 WRX STI power steering rack. Uh, as you can see, the uh, outer tie rod ends have been cut off. They're pretty much shot. And no, uh, from the factory it's not like this. This has been painted. But we are going to completely tear this thing down and rebuild it. And we're not talking just the internals with the, the seals. Uh, but we are talking all new hoses on the outside, brand new boots, brand new outer tie rod ends, obviously, because the other ones have been cut off, uh, and some new bushings going in it as well. This took me quite a bit of time to put together this kit, so I'm going to go through it piece by piece before we even get started uh, with some of the uh, parts that I had to hunt down and uh, with some of the special tools that I had to find or make or will be making. So this is going to be kind of a uh, several week process to get this done because I don't know if, for example, this tool, which will take loose the uh, little nut that's inside here, I know it's too big. I'm going to have to modify it. So we'll have to see what happens, how long that takes. Uh, some other things, I may have to use some pieces of PVC pipe to help set the bushings in because some of these tools, just a simple little tool to try and buy it, is like $400. And I'm not going to be spending that kind of money on it. I want to do this as inexpensively as possible. Uh, however, these are, for the most part, going to be OEM parts. Uh, for example, the repair kit, um, is that what they call this? Yeah, they call it a repair kit. This gives you all of the inner seals that you need, all the, uh, the uh, oil seals that go on the ends, gives you all new O-rings that go up and down on the valve body. Um, I did buy some extra ones, so I've, I've got replacements should I damage one of those. Um, I have got brand new, uh, the bushings are white line because I wanted the stiffer bushing so I bought this kit. This is going to be one of the last things we do. Um, but we have got brand new boots for this. Uh, and I can get you a part number on these. In fact, let's, let's go through uh, and we'll get part numbers for all of this. Now a lot of these parts not only work on the STI but a lot of the turbo models, uh, the Forester XTs, the uh, Outbacks are all almost identical as far as the valving and the O-rings and oil seals that are needed. The difference is in the pinion gear itself, the, the number of teeth. Uh, so for example, the Outback uh, the Outback XT or GT and the Forester XT will have a three to one gear ratio, which basically means from having the wheel turned all the way one way, uh, say all the way to the left and rotating it all the way to the right, you have three full rotations of the steering wheel. The WRX takes that down to 2.7, I believe it is, or 2.6. And then the STI brings that down even further to the, either the 2.6, 2.5. Uh, so, Fewer rotations, which means tighter steering, it's going to feel firmer and uh, be more responsive on the turns. So that's why a lot of people like to do this upgrade because they want, they want a, a little bit of a tighter feel on that steering wheel. Um, so let's start with the boots. Since I've got those in my hand, I'm going to come around and get a little closer to the camera. So for the uh, boots, here's the part number uh, that I was able to get off of this. If you can't read that, it is 9351-0209, and that gets you the boots plus all of the clamps that go with it. Now as far as the repair kit, which gives you all the uh, O-rings for the valve body, let's, let's open this up here. So all the uh, O-rings and oil seals that go inside there, that is uh, the if you can see that number, 34190AG001. I'm not going to go into the whole military alpha gamma stuff. We'll just stick with regular numbers. Um, so here's another seal kit. These are, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to need these because these might just be repeats of the seals that are already in there. But I ordered it anyway just because I wanted to make sure I had the parts I needed. 
Um, so this kit, I don't know if I'm going to need it yet, but it is 34191FE020. Then the good parts, we have got, this is, uh, you, you can see the clamp right here on that. Well, that is the same clamp you've got right here. So these are the main hoses that go into the valve body up here and run to your uh, power steering lines that run up to your uh, power steering pump in the reservoir. Um, so bought brand new set there. Part number on that, we can get that on camera, is 34190FE050. And then of course along with those there is two other uh, pipes, they call them a pipe A and a pipe B. Um, unfortunately on the packaging they don't label which one is A and which one is B, but so you've got one that runs across the whole length of the valve body to the opposite side here. And the main idea is it there's a, a seal in here. Uh, kind of like a plunger that when you push the pressure to one side or the other it forces that to move back and forth and makes it easier to steer and that's obviously the whole thing of a power steering system. Uh, so this one is 34114FE070 And the final one, which is the shorter one, comes from here just to this other side. That is going to be the 34114FE060. So those are the main parts for the actual rebuild. Now I could reuse these bushings on here, but I figure since I'm doing it, I'm going to go with some uh, bushings that are a little bit firmer. These actually feel to be pretty good, uh, considering how badly worn these outer tie rod ends were, or inner tie rod ends, excuse me. So I bought a white line bushing kit for it that is a KSR206, and it gives you the replacement bushings for here, as well as the one for the sleeve that uh, you don't see, I don't have it out here right now, um, and the tools to remove and reinstall the bushings. So we've got those, and then uh, I went, this is the only real non-OEM part aside from the bushings and these are some Moog uh, inner tie rod ends which I'm going to be replacing onto here. Uh, I can give you a part number on those. It is an EV80049. Uh, they were a lot less expensive than what the OEM ones were and I've, I've used Moog parts before not had any issues. Uh, and then a couple of other things I've got to little tool here that's for clamping down these boots. Like I said, I bought this tool on Amazon. I don't know how well it's going to work, but I'm going to try it. Uh, it goes into here to uh, allow you to turn to remove that nut that's on the top of that. Uh, and what's nice about these is I can thread these out so I can grind them down, make them smaller because they're too big to fit in there. Uh, and we'll show you that because that's going to be one of the first things we take apart. Um, so those are reversible so I can use them for tightening, loosening, whatever, but I'm going to have to grind them down to be able to fit in there. Uh, and then I have a container of assembly goo which is uh, designed for ATF transmissions which we all know we use ATF fluid in these. We don't use power steering fluid. It is automatic transmission fluid. Uh, and this is dissolvable in ATF, so this won't harm it in any way, but it will help me assemble it. Um, I could use transmission fluid to put this back together, but I figured the assembly lube was a little bit thicker and would help me get things together a little easier, so I picked this up. I will have links in the description to some of these parts, uh, some of the tools that I picked up, the assembly goo. I do have a link for this as well. and. I will include the inner tie rod ends, both the Moog and the OEM ones. You'll see there's a huge price difference in that. Uh, some of these parts I had to source from uh, 
Subaru dealerships halfway across the country. Some of the stuff actually came from, uh, where was it? It was, oh, uh, so some of the stuff actually came from Dubai. Yeah, so it took me a long time to get all these parts. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to uh, pull this dust cap off right here. And I'm going to, in fact, I'll, I'll show you this, the, the fittings, the splines in here that this needs to fit into, you'll see they don't fit. So I'm going to get this ground down so that they fit in there. And uh, then we are going to pull out a set of saw horses. We're going to bolt this down so we can start disassembling it and uh, get some of these parts replaced and put back together. I may have to, like I said, make some tools along the way. Uh, some pieces of PVC pipe to help seat the uh, oil seals back over the ends. Uh, we'll see what happens. I'm not going by any particular playbook. I know the service manual has its own thing on how to do this. Uh, and I'm just going to do the best I can. So uh, let's get started. So that, uh, that inner seal was shot, or outer seal here. Of course you can see those are pretty much toasted too. now I got to take this out I should be able to pull the splines from the uh, valve body out or the pinion gear out and then uh, take that 
and slide this whole thing apart and let's let's go to it I'm going to see about getting a replacement collar for right here too because I did kind of mess up those uh, messed it up just a little bit there's that part looks like we got a little bit of corrosion down in there this should maybe I have to oh, I think I had to loosen that up That's okay, so that's got to come out. This has a spring with a should be another piece. There it is. And then this is also a little, like a brass seat on there. That's in good shape. I'm not worried about replacing that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get all this stuff out of the way. Now this should come up out of here. There we go. So there's your uh, teeth on your pinion gear. And you can see there's a lot of corrosion in here. So we'll get this all cleaned up. The seals are flattened out, but we've got replacement ones. So we'll replace all those. And there's another one down in there. I'll show you that later. Um, so in the meantime, I'm just going to set these aside and get this all cleaned up. And pull this out, of course. So this is the uh, axle puller that I just got at the Advanced Auto Parts just down the road and it actually threads right into there So that's the seal that goes on this end and uh, this kind of gives you an idea you got the two pipes that go in here feeding fluid so if you want to turn left well whichever way it'll push fluid in here to push it that direction push fluid in here and help push it this direction that's kind of how that works um, and there's the gear that goes with the pinion or this would be the rack I guess you would say and the other part is the pinion gear um, so this is out and there's one more uh, oil seal just like this that's inside here yet that I've got to get out put the new one in replace this uh, that's going to be the fun one because it's kind of a hard plastic you have to stretch it and get it over top of that new oil seal on this end and this will all go back together so I'm going to take a minute sort out parts and uh, we'll see about getting that one out. All right, so it is completely another weekend. Um, the seals that are in here, I need to get those out, and I have no tool that will reach in there and do it. So I've got a uh, washer here that's the same size as the, the uh, inside bore of this cylinder, or just slightly smaller. And then I've got a piece of threaded rod I just picked up at a local tractor supply. Um, it's half 13 if you need to know and I've got a couple of nuts jammed together here another nut that's uh, right about here on the shaft and then I'm going to slide it through put this nut on or this washer on and then put the last nut on and turn this nut which should pull the whole thing up and should bring that with it so uh, I'm gonna get this set up and see if it works Thank you. 
It's actually turning pretty easy. I can turn it by just with my fingers. So it means I've got it broke loose. I just want to make sure I don't scrape against the edge, but it looks like I got it. Oop, there's a tough spot. There we go. A little more. Come on. There it is. So, let me show you what happened. Um, if you could see this here. So, this is the oil seal, and then this is the backing ring. Uh, my washer just caught it, but it was broke. Um, so it actually got stuck in that, which was great because it helped keep that from hitting top or bottom. And uh, then I was able to pull the seal. So now that I've got it apart, I went and I put the seals back on the uh, shaft in the direction and the order that they came off. So when I'm ready to rebuild these and replace these, I know exactly where they are and where they go. So now I've got one more seal that's right here inside that I've got to try and pull up. I think what I'm going to do is kind of the same trick. This will end up sitting up on top here and this will go down through it. But what I'm going to have to do is take my washer and my nut both, kind of reach up in there, push it up, and then thread it onto the shaft to be able to catch this. So uh, I guess let's try it and hopefully it works. Do this one at a time. There it is. Finally. That's and you can see just how close that was. Um, but I got it out. So now I can uh, get this cleaned up and we will start rebuilding it. Okay, so I've gotten this all cleaned out. Now uh, the first thing I need to do is replace the seal that's in the center of the rack and then I will, this actually goes this direction, get these two new ones slid on here and I'm going to use the rack and my slide hammer to pull this seal in and seat it and that will also get this in here at the same time uh, because this has got play and it'll, if I get it down here it might be hard to get in so I think this is my best bet. Uh, I'm also going to get these all lubed up with some gear oil or some uh, bearing grease, uh, gear oil something, and uh, we'll get this put back together. So first thing, this has to be replaced. I am going to slide these off, and it's going to be fun. Got to be careful putting the new one on over those teeth. So let's set this down and go grab some clean rags. One more thing before I can put that in. I've got to put this new seal in here. I'm going to try and put this back in here by hand. My assembly goo. Again, this stuff is uh, designed for automatic transmission fluid, which is what these run with, and it's dissolvable so it won't clog or interfere with the operation of the steering rack. You got to make sure you get the seal put in the right direction. Flat side will go down so the opening, kind of a U-channel in there, faces up. And I'm going to, just for good measure, smear me a bit around inside there as well. And this is actually a little bit uh, too small for my uh, seal seat tool thing, but I'm going to see if I can just, and there it went, it was, that was it, nice and easy. Let me pull that back out. And that seals in, so now uh, to do the other stuff. This is where this other kit comes in. I just need the white one out of here for right now. Still need to uh, pull this off of here. So carefully, I'm just using a pick.
I know is going to give me some fits getting it over top of that. So I'm going to throw a little bit of goo on it. It's just a matter of working it around, which actually might not be too bad. And there it is. That's in. So now i got to put my two seals back on here, and I'm ready to slide the rack back in here and then use my slide hammer to pull it down. These two, this one will face with the U towards the center, and then this backs up right behind it. So I'm going to throw some grease. Well, I should probably put it inside, huh? I need to be very careful going over top of this that I don't damage the seal. And that is a tight fit. So I'm pushing this direction to try and keep it off those teeth. And that's on. My new little gray thingy, easy peasy. I'm going to lube the crap out of this as best as I can. To allow this to slide in. Again, it's dissolvable. So I shouldn't have any issues. Again, just synthetic bearing grease. I don't want it on my hand. Of course, I probably don't want this other stuff on my hand either. Again, this side is a, a dry side where the gears are at. It does not actually have uh, the hydraulic fluid or automatic transmission fluid, whatever you want to call it, um, in it, it's just the teeth, or just uh, grease on it. So that ought to do for that. Set this aside for when I do the pinion to slide that back in. And my slide hammer too. I'm gonna to need that when I'm ready to get this put in. So there's a little more on here. I don't think you can ever have too much. Okay. Uh, this seal I can go ahead and take off. I don't think I need that anymore. Okay. And of course, since you're pulling on the thread, you want to get that hammer in there just as far as you possibly can. The more threads, the better. All right, which seems to be about there. I'm going to get this out of the way. So I'm just inside there. Actually, it's pulling. I'm just pulling on it by hand.
should be able to have most of my teeth for the rack out this way. Got a little further to go. Okay, that's in. Now well, we're uh, really in the home stretch because next, I'm going to slide this back down a bit. It's going to be this seal that sits right in here. Now, there's a lot of confusion as to how far to set that. And there's actually the uh, retainer that threads in here. I just get it in there and let that retainer push it where it belongs because it sits right against it. So here's my retainer. I'm going to get some parts cleaner and clean up my threads here. Retaining ring, again, don't need any of that stuff. Assembly goo. A little bit on the shaft, that's what she said. <laughs> and coat that. Again, the C part, that's going to face inwards. So that's in there. I'm going to let that slide back down. Perfect. Now you're probably wondering how I'm going to complete, how to get that started because it's still on the threads. I have, I have this piece of uh, what they call EMT or uh, it's electrical conduit. This is one inch diameter and it's got the flared end which just sits over that. And should take just a couple light taps. Okay, so it's just past the threads. I don't want to mess with that anymore. I'm going to take this and I'm going to tighten this down into it. And then we'll restake this down and uh, we're in the home stretch. I hope this one opened up wide enough. Let me get this old garbage out of here. So I can feel it touching the oil seal now. Okay, so I don't have a specific torque rating for what this is supposed to be tightened down to, but it's tight. Um, and then they just use a punch and they stake a little spot to lock it in. So I'm going to do that, and uh, this part's done for now. We've got to rebuild the pinion gear that goes in. And then we are to replacing the bushings and putting all new pipes and hoses on it. And this will be done, so uh, let's jump over and work on that uh, pinion gear. So again, inside these two packages, uh, there are these four, kind of a hard plastic ring that goes on the pinion gear here. And then in the other package, there's still these two little ones, don't lose those, because those actually uh, go onto the hoses that go back to your power steering pump and to your return. Those are replaceable, so don't lose those O-rings. This one here yet, this is, this is the old one I took out, get rid of that. Uh, so this one actually goes inside this. Anyway, um, so this, this last seal right here goes in here. So it's getting that one out and replacing that, and then we'll get these last four and we're ready to put it back together. I'm just going to uh, use, I think that's actually the right fit. Uh, this is the handle from a, a seal setting tool, and it looks like it might be just the right size. <clears throat> there it goes. 
There's that old seal. Nice and clean in there. Get the new one. Again, you pay attention to which way it comes out, but the little C, the U-shaped -shape part, faces in because that's designed to expand and hold the fluid in place. I kind of like to be seen sometimes too. <laughs> um, so, I'm going to lube up this part. I'm only doing this now instead of waiting because I just don't want to lose this. So that's all set. And this should just slide right in here pretty easily. I don't know if this will benefit me any. That's weird. Those are the exact same washers. Doesn't fit on that one, but it fits on that one. Not quite. There we go. Now it's set in there. Perfect. So now that that is done, I'm going to set that aside. Uh, let me get this pinion gear cleaned up a little bit. I'm just going to use some parts cleaner. Just going to use a new can of parts cleaner. So if you've never seen inside one of these, it's pretty interesting. This is where your steering column goes, your uh, steering shaft. And then this is the gear that rides against the rack that you were just looking at that I just reassembled. And here's these four little seals, which is these four seals right here. And inside of it, there are just a bunch of little holes here that as you turn, somehow, it knows how to redirect the fluid. Not exactly sure how all of it works, uh, but that's not why we're here. We're here just to rebuild this thing. So I got to get these four seals off of here, put these four on, and uh, that gets us in the home stretch. We can start reassembling. And let's clean this up again. actually went in pretty easy. I'm just going to lube these one by one as I go up. And the reason I'm starting at the bottom and working my way back up is because obviously it's easier to slide over top of one that's already there than one that's not. All right, I'm going to wipe this down. Just check and make sure that nothing's twisted. And they're all good. So uh, all we have left to do now, put some grease on the pinion gear and uh, slide it back together. Once we get that put back together, then we can change out those bushings and uh, put new pipes on it and yeah we're in the home stretch so uh, let's get back to doing all that so uh, we are going to start out remember this thing that goes in here uh, they tell you to take some sealant and cover like a third of the threads and then it tightens to like 5.7 foot-pounds 
and then you back it off by 37 degrees. Uh, I don't have anything that'll do 5.7 foot pounds, so I'm guessing it's just going to be snug it and then back it off a little bit. So I'm going to start out. Got uh, my three bond here with a stringy on it. I'm going to go ahead and get some of this on my threads. About like that, I guess. And then we're going to grease up our spring and cup. The cup here, it's a little grease inside of it, as well as a little bit of grease on this surface. Slide that down in. pretty much just pack the spring with grease. Then the fun part is tightening that down. Actually not too bad. Let me grab my wrench. So again, just a 14 millimeter. Place it the right way. I'm not going to tighten it all the way down until I get my pinion gear in. I'm going to get some grease on this. Grease this sucker up. As well as the end that uh, has a little pocket counter sink counter bore whatever worst part nice and easy and that sits down in there um, and now we just put our other piece on and we are good to go and I was looking for a replacement for this but I could not find one Get the tool to tighten that down. Uh, yep, I still need that. Again, tightening this up, I'm just kind of guessing at it. But that should be good. I'm just going to lock a pair of vice grips on here real quick. I just want to make sure it's going to turn. Oh, yeah. Very nice, okay. All right. Okay, so now we are down to putting these new dust boots on, and if you look, you'll see that uh, the ends are actually two different sizes. Hopefully you can see that. 
well this side of the shaft is larger than this side and then if you look at the two replacement bands band clamps whatever you want to call them uh, these are two different sizes one will actually fit right inside the other so obviously the smaller one goes with the smaller and the larger over here so a lot of people make the mistake of breaking these apart don't do that leave it together because it will I promise I did grab the right one didn't I yeah I did oh <laughs> it doesn't fit over top of the nut so yeah don't put those nuts on first that makes a difference so first thing I want to do is try and lock this in here there we go that's where that belongs then this will slide right over see it does fit I'm gonna go ahead and take this nut back off there we go and then I've got this fancy little tool right here you see that yeah um, when you crimp this it pushes up in the center which allows you to crimp that down There we go. There's that one. There we go. Those are locked in. And we just need to slide these on. we can put these nuts back on here okay so that's the uh, main part of it now I'm gonna unbolt it from here so we can go replace these bushings and get these new pipes put on and this is done so uh, next you'll see us back over on the table okay so the first thing is these new white line bushings it's gonna replace these two and make it a little firmer and a brand new package haven't even opened this yet so I'm not even sure if I know how this is gonna work Nice to give me some lube. Uh, that's the new one that'll go right about here when I put the rack in. I know it's a receiver cup for pressing those bearings out. And, no, oh, not that. Two part bushings. Okay, so it's a bolt thing. I'm going to read the instructions right here with you. Yep, yep. Okay, <laughs> so what size is this? Grab my dimensions. That looks like maybe a 16, nope. 17, yep, yeah, that's a 17 millimeter. So this will go through here. This will go under here. Which way do I want to do that? I guess it doesn't matter. For me, this is, for you, this will be easier to see. That's a 17 on that end. What is this end? That looks like a 14. Well, bigger than a 14. Smaller than a 16. It's a 15. I'm going to grab a actual socket. For the socket, I can throw it on my impact. Okay. So I'll press one your direction, then do the other one mine, I guess. wasn't hard at all. Getting the bearing out of the cup on the other hand. 
bushing. It's a bushing, not a bearing. There we go. So let's flip this around so you can see. Just that easy. I like it. And the new ones will go in nice and easy as well. Nasty looking black grease. Should be able to just press that in there. Easy enough. to start by removing this which that's just a 10 millimeter it looks like okay so now that the bushings are replaced we're gonna knock out these new pipes that go to it and it's really no easy way to show you this because this is the short one and it's gonna go right here and I'm checking yep I got the flares on there so we're good and we're just gonna thread in here and this one yeah, goes to this first one here I feel like I should put some anises on the threads yeah, I think I'm going to. And we got the other one. This one is going to go right here. Again, this is almost one of those things you need to be upside down with. Those line right up. So we'll uh, get the right size wrench and tighten those up. Okay, so I went ahead and tightened those down off camera. Uh, I don't have a line wrench or a flare nut wrench that fits that, but those are 12 millimeter. This is the new line that will go in here. And you can see it's already got some brand new O-rings on it. And the other end I'm going to leave capped off. Till I put it on the Forester. Uh, so for right now, it's a matter of which way this goes. Let's play the lineup game because you got to get it through here somehow. That goes on the other side. So that one's a more rigid line. So we'll start with that. Slide in right there. It's going to sit right there. Yeah. So we get that started in there. It's easier for me to see this and do it than to show you. 
but it's just you gotta hand tighten it so you know you don't cross thread it which there I did and I'm gonna go ahead and slide this back here in place I'm not going to tighten that down. I'm just going to start it so it holds it. Get my other side put in there where it belongs, which is right there. And I just got to tighten these down and it is completely rebuilt. I don't need to show you all that because the next time you see this, we're going to be putting it on the Forester. Thanks for watching and uh, I will see you in the next video.